Jackie. Now, Jake, talk us through what happened with these murders. Well, basically, Shiraishi was an out-of-work talent scout working in the adult industry and getting girls to work at clubs. And he discovered that um, they were easy pickings, that if you took one of these girls back to the apartment and killed them and took their ATM card, that you could make some quick money. And after he killed the first one, um, he developed a taste for it. So he killed about nine people in total. One of them was the boyfriend of a woman who went missing. And when he realized that she had gone to see him and came to confront him, he killed him as well, which pretty much destroyed the defense's um, argument that the people who had been killed were asked to be killed by him. How um, did he... How did his crimes come to light? One of his victims uh, went missing and her brother had access to her social media accounts. And also because he had been careless and hadn't turned off her phone when she got to the nearest train station to him, the police were able to track her phone all the way to his apartment. So a combination of a brother um, who was very aware of the fact that, you know, his sister shouldn't go missing, and his own carelessness led the police to his apartment on the morning of October 31st, 2017, which was Halloween. Um, and when the police entered the apartment, um, they found nine heads and body parts and coolers in the place, and uh, the investigation was quickly closed. It really is a gruesome story. Shireshi found the majority of his victims through social media, as you said, uh, expressing a desire to kill themselves, uh, those victims, but none of the nine uh, consented to being killed. What else did the judge have to say? The judge had to say that it was a horribly selfish crime and that the, the cruelty perpetuated on his people um, and his lack of remorse made it impossible to conceive of him reforming and that the death penalty was the only appropriate um, sentence for justice to be meted out. And what arguments did Shireshi's defence have? You touched on that before. The defence argued that these people um, had all reached out looking for someone to help them kill themselves or kill them. Um, and in Japan, that's a separate crime from murder. Um, when someone asks you to kill them, uh, that's a lesser, a lesser offence and sometimes you don't get the death penalty in that case. But the general rule here is that if you kill more than two people, the death penalty is almost guaranteed, unless you're found not guilty by reason of insanity. Um, and any way you slice it, at least one of the victims certainly didn't ask to be killed, and the judge dismissed the defense's arguments. Uh, and Shiraishi himself at one point said, yeah, the lawyers are making up stuff. I did it. I don't really feel bad about it. I did it because I was greedy and because I enjoyed killing people. Wow. How closely has the nation been following this story? It really is quite gripping. It has been sort of tabloid fodder, and Shiraishi has given a fair number of interviews and published um, comics about his life and, and his fantasies. So it's gotten a certain amount of attention. But I don't think there's anyone clamoring for a reprieve in his case because even death penalty opponents find his behaviour pretty indefensible. Well, it sounds like the death penalty didn't come as a surprise in this case. Is there still a lot of public support, though, for the death penalty overall in Japan? I'd say 80% of the public in opinion polls supports the death penalty. And what have family members of the victims said now that shireshi has been sentenced to death? Uh, they're horrified. Um, and the Japanese media and the police have kept the actual names of most of the victims out of the press. Um, so it, it's, you don't really get a sense of who the victims are, the average viewer. But the families have said that it is a terrible smear against their loved ones that he's claiming they wanted to die when in most cases he just murdered them without their consent. It really is a shocking story. Jack Edelstein, thank you for explaining to us what has happened in Japan. Thank you.